In this video, we are going to talk about what I think is the single fastest path to earning six figures as a remote developer in 2025. So we're gonna talk about college, we're gonna talk about boot camps, and we are going to talk about self-study. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Jake. I'm an ex-Amazon engineer, and I'm making these videos for you for free to share exactly what did work, what didn't work, what I'm actively doing to earn over $100,000 a year as a remote front-end developer. Now, if you're trying to break into the this industry and you wanna know exactly how I did it, how I'm actively doing it, go ahead and go to frontendfuture.com. I've also included a link down below in the description. I've made a free training for you, walking you through step-by-step -step how I did it and how I'm actively doing it, all right? So if you want that, go ahead and go there. And then without further ado, let's get into the video, all right? So what we're gonna cover today is we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of college. How long is it gonna take? What's it gonna cost? Us. We're going to talk about the same for boot camps and the same for self-study. Which of these is going to ultimately be best for you? All right. We're going to help you understand that today. And then we're even going to talk about a fourth thing, right? If you want to take a different path, a path, you know, that most people don't talk about or even know exists out there, a shortcut that's going to help you go even faster. We're going to talk about that as well at the end of the video. Okay. So without further ado, let's, let's talk about college. All right, so this is the single most popular option that's talked about uh, widespread on the internet, right? This is the standard four-year degree. And you know, if you're watching this video and, and maybe you're in your 30s, your 40s, 50s, what have you, and you're like, oh, you know, is it too late for college? Or is it too late to break into this industry? Let me just cut straight with you. You don't need college to break into this industry. I've seen very talented engineers that did not study computer science, that did not set out on this career path initially. It is totally possible to transition into this industry without a computer science degree, but let's talk about the good and the bad of it, all right? So, you know, if you go to college to study computer science, it's going to set you back, say, 50 to 200K. And depending on your financial situation, you may or may not have to take out a loan for that, right? Which is going to put you depending on your you know financial situation whether or not you have a family and other responsibilities already it's going to you know it's going to be a significant investment uh for you and you're gonna to have to pay that off over years to come okay and then the other thing is it's going to take you about four years of your time and obviously there's different types of schools you know there's associate's degrees there's bachelor degrees and you know some schools will do it online others won't um but it's a significant time investment and and that's something you have to ask yourself right you know if you're already 30 if you're already 40 like and you're trying to get into this industry so that you can start making money before retirement or what have you, is four years going to make it worth it for you, right? If you're earning 50K now, if you're earning 20K, 30K, whatever now, you maybe run some numbers and, and figure out, oh, is this actually worth it for me to, to go and spend those four years? Now, I'll tell you about myself personally. I went to college when I was younger. Um, it, it worked out in the long run. Looking back on it, I don't think I needed those four years to actually learn what it takes to be a developer. As a matter of fact, maybe I'll talk about that a little more here in a second, but the actual skills needed on the job are very different from what you learn in college, okay? So I had to learn most of how to, add, how to actually code on my own by taking courses, doing different things outside of school um, because learning how to code wasn't really taught in college. There's a lot of theory and that's, that's the main point I wanna highlight here is in computer science degree, there's there's a lot of math. There's a lot of say logic classes. So I'll give an example of like discrete math is basically a logic class, uh, linear algebra, things like that. That they teach you how to solve problems, how to break down problems and, and solve them, and they give you that theoretical kind of base. But to just code, you know, to code a web app, to be a front end developer, to be a back end developer, you don't need college, right? All this can be learned outside of school school right um and so it's it's great in the sense that it gives you that broad foundation it lets you see a lot of the theory a lot of the why you know top experts in the field or why certain people believe certain things about you know some of these computer science concepts right there's there's years of research and study and things like that but um it's very theoretical and it's not going to translate directly to job specific skills okay but on the contrary, the kind of ironic part of it is colleges are pretty good for job placement, right? Especially if you go to a top computer science school, if you go to one of these top universities or institutions, right? They're pretty good at placing you in a job, even if you don't necessarily have the hard technical skills yet. Uh, because for whatever reason, recruiters still love to see, you know, they love to see a degree on a piece of paper, but 
nowadays, I think that tide is turning and recruiters and companies are starting to understand that, you know, college graduates aren't necessarily the best coders. They're not necessarily the best engineers. They don't necessarily have the hardest technical skills, especially, you know, if you're going to work at a startup or something where you have to perform, it's not like big tech cushy, like you can coast, you know, um, and so anyways, uh, that's neither here nor there, kind of beating a dead horse, but uh, the bad is that it's theoretical, it's slow, and it's expensive, right? It's going to take you four years and a serious investment on your part. All right, so let's move on to boot camps, okay? If you've been on the internet for any amount of time, everybody and their mother uh, is talking about boot camps. Can I learn how to code? Can I go to a coding boot camp and land a job instantly? Are they going to guarantee me a job? Let me, let me cut straight with the reality of boot camps, okay? So they're going to set you back anywhere from eight to 30K, all right? Some of these boot camps are cheaper, some of them are more expensive. Um, and obviously there's varying qualities of them, right? Some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are gonna give you more hands off, some of them are gonna be more self-driven. Okay, but the, the, the kind of standard um, length of time that these are gonna last is anywhere from three to six months, which I, you know translates to about, what is that? Uh, 12 to 24 weeks or more. Um, and so, you know, there's a there's a serious time investment on your parts. They're going to be cheaper than college, okay? So college is more theory, it's more broad, it's it's gonna give you a taste of a lot of different things. Bootcamps is gonna be very focused on those hard technical skills. And in that sense, it's, it's pretty good, okay? It's going to teach you how to code. It's going to teach you, you know, to build your first web application and things like that, okay? Um, so that's what's good. It's intensive and it's hands-on. What's not so great about boot camps is that they're inflexible, they're not necessarily self-paced, and there's limited job support, right? And obviously, this is a spectrum, and I can't speak for every single boot camp out there, but excuse me, some of them, you know, are going to help you directly help you land into a role. Others are just going to be like, all right, you know, we taught you the skills. Now it's on you to go ahead and go find yourself a job. Okay. And, and so, you know, depending on what you're after, depending on what you want out of your education, what you want out of your study, this may or may not be right for you. Okay. If you are somebody who's a parent or maybe has kids or already is working full time and, um, you know, you have responsibilities, you don't necessarily have all the free time in the world to put towards this boot camps, you know, they may or may not be the best option. They may or may not be the best option for you if you are seriously limited on time. Now, if you have a lot of time and you can go full time at this, if you can study full time at this, this might be a decent option for you. Uh, I would highly recommend, you know, if you're thinking about going down this path, highly recommend doing your research on a lot of these boot camps because a lot of them are just, you know, they're just frauds. They're going to promise you the world and, and, you know, the reality is it's, can be difficult to break into this industry for the first time. It's not the easiest thing in the world. I, I do believe that most people can do it, but um, you have to be very careful about which you choose, especially if you're going to invest this kind of money up here, okay? So that's kind of the pros, the cons. There's good ones, there's bad ones. Um, but if you're thinking about going down this route, just do your research, do your own research and, and make sure that you're choosing one that's legit, one that's going to get you results, okay? And now the third option down here is self-study, all right? Who doesn't like free? Who doesn't like flexible? Of course, of course, everybody does. And I think when I was going through this, I had some blend of both, right? So, you know, I had that four-year college degree and I had some self-study on the side. And the reason I had to self-study on the side was I needed those hard technical skills that weren't taught in college, okay? And so I really went at this kind of the hardest way, right? I did four years, I paid the most, and, you know, I did work on top of that. So, you know, I did all these different things just to kind of break it to this industry. And I don't think this is really necessary in 2025. I think you can get away with, uh, without the four year degree, I think you can get away with not necessarily, um, you know, going full boot camp or full self study or what have you, right? So let's talk about self study itself. It's going to be free ish. The thing about software development and learning how to code is there is so much great information out there in 2025. There is amazing information out there because I've seen it myself. Okay, I've seen it myself. I know what's good, I know what's bad. And so, you know, if you're gonna go down this route, you're not gonna have to spend that much money if if any money at all, right? There are great free resources out there that you can look up and you can find with a simple Google search. Now, the tricky part about self-study is you don't know what is good and what is bad information. Uh, there is so much information out there and everybody will tell you that there's the there's is the best, obviously, but uh, the reality is some are better than others and there's a lot of noise that you're going to have to filter through to actually find the signal, okay? And if you're self-studying, odds are, right, it's going to take you six plus months just because you don't 
you don't necessarily know anybody in the industry. You don't know what works. You don't know what doesn't work. And so you're in this kind of trial and error period of like learning things and then like implementing them. And then you don't really know if you're going right down the right path. And maybe you doubt yourself. You question whether or not what you're doing is actually mattering. And the reality is, is it's just going to take longer. Okay. If you choose to go down this route. So the good is that it's flexible. It's going to be relatively cheap. And when I say cheap, probably less than, you know, less than like a grand. I think you can get a lot of these courses for even less than a hundred bucks. Okay. So, you know, if you're seriously strapped on cash, maybe this is an option you consider. Now, the bad part about self-study is that you're not going to have any direction. You're not going to have any accountability. And the reality is most people are going to fail. Okay. Because, you know, especially if you're already an adult, say 25 plus, 35 plus, things like that, and you have kids or you have a full-time job and you have other responsibilities in life, you know, other things that you want to do that you want to spend time on, eventually this coding thing is going to fall by the wayside and you're going to completely forget that, hey, I was working towards this and it's going to take a bit of time to actually go and break into this industry, right? And so that's why, you know, when people go down the self-study route, most people, most people fail just because of that lack of accountability, that lack of direction, and that lack of the ability to kind of uh, sift through the noise out through there, sift through the bad information out there. But, you know, if you're completely strapped on cash and you know you want to do this, it could be a decent option for you. Now, let's talk about the fourth option, the shortcut that most people don't even, you know, aren't even aware that, you know, it's really possible. And, if you can go down this path, it's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to save you a lot of headache and really just jumpstart your career in a, in a way that's not really advertised out there. And the way to do this is basically to get mentored by somebody that's actively in the industry, that's somebody that's already worked as an engineer, somebody that's already done the thing, learned how to code. They know how to apply to jobs. They know how to land in remote tech jobs. They know how to do it all because they've done it themselves. Uh, and so that is the number four that is the that is the shortcuts that anyone can take today to go ahead and break into this industry okay so you know if you know an engineer in your life if you um you know want to do this thing you want to do it right and you want to go the fastest possible it is in your best interest to go in and get mentored by somebody in this industry right so if you know go if you know an engineer ask them what did they do how did they prepare how did they learn you know, how do they do all these things so that they can get into this industry? And what you'll find is that a lot of times people in the industry, they say very different things than what's advertised online, right? Because everybody on the internet is, is trying to sell you something, right? But if you talk to somebody that's actually, you know, just an engineer full time and they don't necessarily have anything to offer, they're going to give you raw feedback as to what works, what doesn't work, things like that. Okay. So I fully realize everybody watching this video, you don't necessarily know any engineers. You don't necessarily... Uh, know anybody in the industry yet, but you're thinking about learning how to code, you're thinking about breaking into this industry, or maybe you're a little further down the path, you know how to code a little bit. And you know, you're trying to now land a job or things like that. And so if you get this mentor in your corner, it could lead to a few things, right? It could lead to job referrals, which is going to give you a higher chance of interviews, which is going to give you a higher chance of landing a job, it's going to not waste your time in terms of wasting time on bad information, wasting time on learning outdated technologies, things like that. Uh, and then it's just going to streamline your path. You know exactly what you need to do and then you go and do it. Okay. And so if you can find somebody like that in your life, go ahead and reach out to them. This is going to be your best bet. And don't be shy about, you know, paying somebody to, to get ahead, right? If they have exactly what it is to uh, move you forward in life, right? Why, why would you not invest in yourself? Why would you not be willing to trade some a bit of money for a lot of money in the future, right? If you could invest, say, less than $10,000 to get somebody's help for a prolonged period of time to give you the skills necessary to go and earn a remote income for the rest of your life, to go and earn a remote six figures for the rest of your life, why would you not pay for that? It seems like a pretty fair trade to me. Um, and so that's what I'll say. If you have this in your network already, reach out. The worst you can do is have a conversation, learn a little bit more than you knew yesterday, and you know be further ahead, be further ahead along this journey to earning a remote six figures. Now, if you don't have any anybody like this in your life, rec I, I would recommend reaching out to me, okay? So you can go to frontendfuture.com uh, and I've gone ahead and actually just made the free training for you. It's going to walk you through step by step how to actually break into this industry from somebody who's done it, from somebody who's actively earning over $100,000 a year as a remote front end developer. You can watch that free training. And if you want my personal help, if you want my personal help, 
you know, you can go ahead and book in a call and we'll have a conversation and see if we want to work together or see if this is even something you want to do. Okay. So that link is frontendfuture.com. I've also included a link down below in the description. Okay. So I recommend checking out that training. If it's, you know, if that's for you, you can book in a call. If it's not for you, you got the free training and you learn something about how this actually works. Um, but if you are thinking about doing this, I'd recommend doing it now because my time is very limited. I work full time and I have students. And so I can only help so many people. So if this is something you're interested in, don't wait, go to that link today and, and go ahead and watch that training, go ahead and book in a call. Um, but beyond that, this has been the video. Okay. So you understand the trade-offs of self-study bootcamp and college. You understand if you want to take a different path, right? If you want to go faster at this and, and maybe go the kind of hacky way, uh, go direct by finding a mentor, you can do that as well. Um, but that is kind of the video. I appreciate you watching this video. Again, my name is Jake and I appreciate you watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.